Welcome back to part two of my pregnancy journey. Um, we're going to get more practical about the things that I have done to kind of maintain my health um, in terms of my diet um, throughout my pregnancy, my exercise routine, if you want to call it that, um, how I've taken care of my skin, um, weight gain throughout pregnancy, um, healthy weight gain throughout pregnancy, um, and any other things, uh, any other business that I remember, forgive me if I look down, it's because I've written some stuff down so that I don't forget to cover um, all the things that I've done in my pregnancy. Now, um, in the first trimester, for me, throughout each um, trimester, as my experiences have gone through, as I've gone through the experience, my dietary needs and the things that I have, um, if you want to call craved, and I'll talk about you do crave, I guess, if you want to talk about it, you do crave certain things, but I really believe that when we're craving things, it's because our body's lacking a particular mineral or vitamin. So, you know, if you're craving something, I don't know, um, um, sweet or something, I don't know, it might be to do with your blood sugar levels or, um, you know, I'll jump back. Like my first trimester, I, have, I felt the need for tamarind and okra and I really really like I needed I needed that I wanted that but when I did some research I figured I found out that you know okra is high high in folic acid which is exactly what you need at the beginning of your pregnancy because that's what you it, it helps with the body with the baby's um, formation of the you know the brain and, and and all those things so I think a lot of the time when we're craving things it's actually our body telling us that we're lacking certain vitamins and, and minerals and it's really to understand what is it I'm lacking and trying to um, give your body that in the most healthy way rather than using that as an excuse to you know eat the things that we know are not necessarily good for us or our baby and then there are good ways to eat things that you want so if you have like a sweet craving you know there's good ways to you know deal with that in terms of like having fruits and you know the rest of it throughout your pregnancy so we'll cover some of that um in my first trimester um i became very much um texture sensitive so you know, previous to being pregnant, I could eat, you know, salad and I was fine. I could eat spinach and I was fine. But I found that as I got into kind of the heart of the, the first trimester, textures of spinach and things like that in my body, I just, I, I couldn't cope with it. But I know how important spinach is to, um, like, iron levels in my body and, and the other, you know, good minerals and, and vitamins that it contains so you start to you know you figure out ways to to have it so if you become adverse to certain greens and things like that there's so many different ways you can have it and for me i found that within the first trimester smoothies were a really great way to pack those things into my body so you know i i you know had um uh smoothies and if you want to call them yeah smoothies or juices with loads of like green vegetables in there so I can kind of bypass the whole texture issue, but get that straight into my body and it goes into, you know, my bloodstream and gets to the placenta, gets to the baby very quickly. So I mixed it up. I had things instead of banana sometimes because of that, you know, that sugar hit that you get with bananas, I put plantain instead so it's not as sweet. And then I added, you know, other things that my body would need just to, you know, really, really boost um, some of the smoothies that I was having. And some ways to really ensure that you're kind of, putting as much um, nutrients and fiber and all the rest of that into your smoothies and, and things like that was I added like different not supplements but powders so one of the things that I found really good to do was in my smoothies and you can you don't necessarily have to use this particular one but if you're super busy and you don't necessarily have time to mill your um, vegetables um, not your vegetables. <laughs> Mill your 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 seeds and your nut your your seeds. Then you know um, a really great brand for cold cold milling. Some of these things are Linwoods, um, and so this is one of my favourite ones to have. It's got flax seed, sunflower seed, and pumpkin seed in that. And if you pop that into your smoothie, or even sprinkle it into any salad that you're having, then you're going to get a good boost of all the proteins, the zinc, the omega threes from the flax seed and your sunflower. You add that into your smoothie. It's not just like a banana smoothie or whatever else. You're you're putting in kind of the the the, the foundational vitamins that you need for your 
yourself and your baby so I added that to a lot of the smoothies that I would have or I would sprinkle it onto my salads I never just have like a plain you know salad with just you know the vegetables I always add like some kind of seed just to give that that vitamin boost that you need and I found that that actually really really helped throughout the pregnancy um, if you're at work and you don't want to take it this big then then we we'll do these little mini variety packs as well and it's got um, it's got the sachets for flaxseed hemp which is really really important for your omega 3 6 and 9 which is important for brain development for the baby and maintaining your um, your omega levels as well um, yeah so they've got different sachets and I mean I keep one of these in my drawer at work and so if I have breakfast at work or anything like that I just sprinkle something like that in there if I take that in with me um, what I was always doing is so important um, for my breakfast to have variety because as I was mixing up one I know I know I'm getting enough variety of things because the same old same old sometimes it just your, your taste buds just are just are messing with you and so you might have to experiment a little bit about okay what can I take what can't I take things will surprise you there's things that I loved before pregnancy and I just I can't I can't deal with oh I couldn't deal with throughout different stages of my pregnancy you'll find that in your first trimester your eating habits will change you what you you know how much you want to eat will change just because if you are suffering from nausea and that is not just in the morning that can be throughout the day um, and that can really like have a massive hit on you certain smells would just throw you off so your eating habits that that will be a little bit kind of all over the place particularly the first few weeks so you need to kind of experiment what can I take what can't I take etc so I changed up a lot so in terms of my breakfast I'll have things like um, porridge in the morning granola um, fruits um, things like that those those are the main things that I kind of switched switched up throughout my um, you know first trimester even now throughout my entire pregnancy um, smoothies things like that just making sure I had a good you know foundational meal in the morning um, to get me through um, the day but obviously there's some things you're not going to be able to to eat as much so just figure out what's going to work for you my first trimester started obviously through in February I found out I was pregnant so March April so I was really blessed to be in a season where um, you know the different fruits were now coming through so I found that eating fresh fruits really really helped cool fresh fruits really really helped um, in the morning so I had like I would have um, I think I've got a picture of it coming up I will have I would have a bowl full of like berries like blueberries raspberries um, blackberries just a nice mix and I'll sprinkle some of these um, seeds on top of it um, here in the UK you can get something called koyo which is a coconut based yogurt with no added sugars and things like that so you can put that over the um the fruits and the vegetables as, i mean not fruits not vegetables but fruits as well in the morning so just like finding different things like that really really helped me in terms of my breakfast and i was getting the antioxidants i, I needed i was getting the mineral minerals that i needed it was a really nice boost for my system fruits are very easy to digest in the mornings um seeds are very very easy to digest in the morning so it's getting into my bloodstream so it's kind of picking up those energy levels that you're struggling with particularly particularly in the morning um so those are the type of type of breakfasts that i was having and um, throughout my first trimester i would have again i was very conscious of what the baby needed at that stage so making sure that the things i had like i said with the folic acid so i had um loads of okra I would you know put that in a stew or a soup or you know I try to get it in one way or another tamarind fresh tamarind that you break open I mean for me if you want like a sweet hit but without you know processed sugar I mean that was lovely for me um, and I and I didn't realize until I did some research that it's high high in folic acid so I guess that's kind of why I, and I woke up on one I thought I want I want I want tamarind I really want tamarind and my friend got it for me and it kind of just it, it, when you find something that hits the spot it just it just makes that day a lot better I tell you um, so do your research and find the things that really kind of helps with nausea if you are suffering from nausea sometimes having dry 
crackers, things in, you know, there's like dry spelt crackers and things like that in Tesco's now and Sainsbury's that you can get that kind of helps with the nausea. Um, some women have found that ginger tea helps with nausea as well. Again, I mean, I can't really speak from that experience because I didn't have that. But, you know, experiment with the different things that you do have. Now, I'm a person that likes to take, you know, different herbs and things just to help my body, you know, do the things it needs to do. But in the first trimester, because your baby is so vulnerable at that point, just be very, very careful, even about the herbal teas that you have. Do your research around whether they're going to have um, certain effects on um, the, the baby and, and the fetus. And just adjust um, to the things that you need. Um... In terms of foods to avoid, now here, he, here's the plus side for vegan pregnancies. A lot of the foods that you have to, they start talking to you about avoiding. They're not in my diet anyway, so I didn't have a, you know, have that struggle of, oh, you know, I can't eat cheese anymore, or the soft cheeses because it, you know it contains certain things that are dangerous to the baby. I didn't have to worry about like the pates, which are, I think. Um, cured uncooked meats things like that because of its you know side effects to the baby i didn't have to worry about um tea and coffee because i'm not a person um as a seven-day adventist christian i don't drink tea or coffee and that's you know a lot around you know the health principles that we live by so i don't have to deal with you know taking tea or coffee out of my diet because i never had it um oh gosh there's so many different um, you have to become, if you are on a meat-based diet, you do have to do your research and read up a lot about the things that you shouldn't be eating anymore because of the effects that you have on, you, that it can have on, on your baby. So as a vegan, you know, that's the first plus because you don't have to worry about any of those because you don't have them anyway in, in your body. And so you're starting off a pretty decent foundation. So a lot of people are saying, well, you know, how are you going to do it? Well, when you list the amount of things they have to take out on their diet anyway, they're pretty much veering towards a plant-based diet in the first place. And the amount of fruits and vegetables that you, raw fruits and vegetables, um, that you have to kind of bring into your body to ensure that you're getting, you know, live enzymes in there for your baby, actually kind of steers you towards having a, a more... Um, nutrient based diet than you than you had before so you know that's that's tick number one for those critics of how can you look after your baby when you're on a vegan pregnancy now dealing with those things you know a lot of the questions are about how and where do you get your protein from now the you as a vegan you can get complete proteins from your plant um from your your vegetables things like um potato has proteins things like um um quinoa is a as a is a is a complete protein things like your nut um, butters you have to be careful with certain nuts but things like almond butter has a hit of protein um dark calcium people talk about calcium where are you going to get your calcium from like i talked about before i you know that's why I knew I couldn't take out like spinach and things out of my diet. But dark leafy green vegetables are so dense in um, calcium and they are easily available to your body. Your body can use those a lot quicker and easier than in other sources where it has to process it in order to extract it and then for your body to use. So it's, it's more, you know, you are getting, if you're eating a variety and a balanced um diet you are you are getting the amount of protein that you need you're getting the amount of um calcium um calcium that you need um yes your 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 need for protein increases because you know your your, your body's making a baby um but um nine times out of ten you are getting that if you're having a varied a varied plant-based diet so like i said things like um uh potatoes things like quinoa things like um a rice is actually whole grain um rice is full of proteins um things like um legumes things like beans a variety of beans are full of protein so so far as you make sure you've got variety in your diet of these things you are getting enough protein and complete proteins by how you combine them um so that's number one your calcium 
one of the best sources of calcium is tahini. Um, one of the best sources of calcium is um, chickpeas, and you can get you can make hummus really, really quickly, really, really easily. You spread that on a piece of I don't know pita bread toast, and you're good to go. You got a hit of protein there. You add some um, tahini in there. You got a hit of um, calcium in there, and your body is is receiving everything it needs. So you know. I think I read somewhere, you you see the cows, where do they get their calcium from? Well, they get that from the grass, the, the, the grass that they're eating, and we can get it exactly from the source. Bypass the cow, and you go through the source, and you, you're getting it straight into the body. So, um, yeah, just educate yourself, and make sure that you, you know, you've got a variety of of foods and how and how you're getting those things into your body so those are the kind of things that I was making sure I've got enough variety um, particularly for the first well throughout your entire experience um, and getting those things into into your body so okay so that was breakfast and a little bit of lunch um, but those are the type of things I was doing for breakfast now in terms of lunches lunches and dinners are quite similar but not um, if you are busy and you want to make sure that you're getting the things that you need. Sometimes leftovers from dinner the night before for lunch the next day is a great way to, you know, know that you're going to get what you want. You know, taking the risk of going to work and not bringing something with you and then not getting the thing that you want is 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 quite it's difficult. Um, so I like to try and take leftovers to um, to work with me. Um, but some of the best, you know, again for lunches. You know, I did things like a lot of grains, um, my rices, my quinoas, my um, bulgur wheat is a really, bulgur wheat is a really nice one for breakfast or for lunch. So you can turn bulgur wheat into a really nice porridge using um, some milk and just a sweetener like maple syrup or some um, honey, and then you can you can have that as a savory meal. And again, I will boost that up with my nut, with my seeds, um, and salad. E Pretty much every single salad I have, I have broccoli, um, beetroot, things like that, which are really packed full of, you know, really important vitamins for the body, for your blood. In order to try and get vegetables in, one of the quickest, easiest ways, particularly when you're tired, are stir fries. They're really very, very quick to do. You can put a variety of um, vegetables in there, um, for anything from kale, broccoli, sweet peppers. Um, Oh my goodness! Um, carrots, uh, um, not cucumber, but cucumber friend, courgettes. Um, <laughs> lot you can just there's so many different ways to pack vegetables in. You can have um, pastas. You know, into I use you can use um, brown rice, um, brown rice noodles. You can get them from re like right now. I think we've got some really decent health food stores that you can get things like that from so there's loads of different alternatives if you can't do that and you know budgets are strained you go to tesco's you go to sainsbury's you can get some whole wheat um, um whole wheat pasta spaghetti pastas you can get the organic ones or yeah you can get the organic ones i think for like one pound or something which is about over a pound and that's done with durham wheat without any you know animal products in there you can use that to supplement and put that into your stir fries and i do that quite a lot um and then they're really good to kind of take in um they keep really well for the next day um you can use tofu which is a really good um source of protein as well in your stir fries or um, anything else that you know you want to have as well throughout the day um, what else so in terms of thinking about your sort of your omegas and your, your omega 3 and 6's which are important for brain development your calcium one of the best ways I found to um, get that into my body is the milks that you use and I tend to use um, things like almond milk and um, hemp milk now hemp milk the, you can make this so easily on your own, but I know that a lot of us have a really busy lifestyle. Or if you're just transitioning and you're just trying to put good things into your body, you might not necessarily have, you know, none of these things really need like a huge amount of equipment, but you might need a decent, like a strong blender to make your own hemp milk. But they're very, very quick and easy to do and probably cheaper to do um, 
on your own and I think we'll have a video on here just showing you how to make your own hemp milk and how to make your own almond milk and then at the right stage look on the description box and we will link that video in for you it takes a few minutes to do and it'll actually keep very well in your fridge um, for a week glass bottle and you just run through that very quickly but if you don't have the time to do those things well we're now in a time, I think when I was starting to become vegan vegetarian, it was very hard to find some of these milks in the supermarkets. You have to go to the health food stores and they are very, very expensive sometimes. But now, you know, the major supermarkets are picking these things up and you can get them at a competitive price. So the milks I would recommend um, or and I had throughout my pregnancy just because of its nutrient content and the things that you need was um, hemp milk. So this is good hemp. You can get this from Tesco, from Sainsbury's, from um, Asda, I think. I tend to get them from Tesco or Sainsbury's and they're always competing against each other. So see who's cheaper and then you can get it. And then they do these little things where if it was more expensive then you get a little voucher and you can get it cheaper the next time. Um, but um, hemp is very, very good in terms of um, your mega content, your mega 3, and it's a very, very good protein source as well. So you can use that for your porridges, you can use that as the base for your, um, for your, for your smoothies, etc. So, um, yes, so that's good hemp. And then if it does have a taste to it, some people are adverse to it, I mean, I don't mind it. Um, I quite like it so but if you if you can't deal with hemp then um, almond breeze is a good um, unsweetened because you find that there's quite a few I think Alpro do one and you know that's fine as well but I like to go for one which doesn't have as many additives and um, sugars in there etc so almond breeze um, blue diamond almond breeze they have that this in again Tesco Sainsbury's I'm pretty sure as does doing them as well I think Waitrose does them um, and almond is a, is a fantastic source of calcium for your body as well all the major supermarkets you'll be able to get them from so I'm not recommending one above the other shop around shop online I shop online all the time just to see who's cheapest um, and you can you can get this as well but um, you can um, you can get Almond, almonds, the nuts themselves, check out um, Holland and Barrett's and keep an eye out when they're doing the buy one, get one half price or buy one, get one for a penny sale and stock up and then you can make your own almond butter, well you can make your own almond butter which is really nice on like toast or for me I really enjoyed almond butter on banana, I mean I just hit the spot but um you know you can stock up on that when they've got like great deals like that in Holland and Barrett's and you can make your own almond milk very very quickly very very easily so almonds nuts are available everywhere in terms of the hemp seeds I don't really see that a lot in the supermarkets but you can get them in health shops you can get them online I mean I got this one from my local health shop um, and you can turn them into you can turn it into a milk very easily and like I said before we'll do a video where we talk show you how to do that or you can just um, add it straight into your smoothie um, whatever you want to combine in your smoothies you can just add that straight in blend it up and then you're getting a good shot of um, your omegas and your essential fatty acids as well as your proteins so there's you can see that you know we've been provided with so many different ways to get really good nutrients and vitamins into our bodies and deal with all these questions well where are you going to get your omegas if you don't eat fish well you know we've got some seeds here that's going to help you to do that and very very easy to prepare and just you know add to a meal sometimes i sprinkle this on my you know salads like i said i like to give my food a nice little boost so I add some some kind of seeds or some kind of nuts or whatever into that so that's a really that's a really good I mean I'm not saying necessarily this brand um, you can get um, hemp seeds from again any any health food store or online and just find the best deal for you um, yeah and then yeah so that that one was a good one in terms of um, other other seeds I like to add in um, chia seeds and I think there's been a lot about chia 
in in the health food press um i like to kind of you can sprinkle this you can add that into a smoothie um you just have to soak it a little bit and then add that in this is a really really great source of proteins really really great source again of your omega threes um really great source of fiber and that's one of the things that i would talk to you about is um some people some women experience constipation just because and I did experience this that, you know, in your first trimester, second trimester, your digestion, digestion does slow down. And so therefore your bowel movements will change. But you can still, by making sure you're getting the roughage and that you get that from your vegetables, um, your salads, and things that are high in fiber, um, that will alleviate you know constipation and things like that and I found that at the beginning of my pregnancy my my dad you know I was quite regular anyway and then it kind of slowed down um so as I kind of maintained my my fresh salads and vegetables and kind of added seeds and things like this into my diet though I had them before but just making sure I'm more consistent my my bowel movements picked up very quickly and I haven't again suffered from anything I haven't suffered from constipation and things like that at all really throughout I mean I've had moments but the moment I know that I'm like okay well you know I need to pick up my you know my salad my vegetable intake pick up some of these things and then I've maintained pretty good bowel movements throughout my pregnancy and that is essentially you don't want um waste in your in your body you know and those toxins have to go somewhere and if it's not coming out in the bowel um if it's not you know if it's staying in the in the body then you're gonna have you know toxic you know toxicity in your body which is gonna affect you and you know might affect your baby so make sure it's very very important to that's why they the doctors and everyone recommend that you have a diet you know, rich in fruits and vegetables because if you're having a diet rich in foods and vegetables your body's gonna be regulated you're gonna be you know your movements is gonna alleviate any move um movements and um, constipations and things like that and you want to make sure your bowels are moving there is nothing worse than constipation and feeling bunged up and the rest of that sort of you know throughout pregnancy another way to alleviate that as well the way your bowels move um is really connected with how well your liver is doing um and how well um your, how much bile you're releasing into your body to create that you know that process and one of the best ways to do it is you know a little bit of warm well not a little bit warm water in the morning with lemon and i tried you know i did that for a while which first thing in the morning is it just wakes up your liver you know gets that you know the liver moving liver working gets the bile going um you know it's quite detoxifying for the system safe for your baby safe for you um and then you start your you know what you're having throughout the day and if those things are working within your body you can have oh, pretty decent um movements um throughout um your experience um now also what i was going to mention throughout um your pregnancy keeping hydrated is very 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 important 